in this particular section, we are going to talk about what we've already talked about. It's, it's half summary and more like giving yourself a step-by-step. -step. This is what you do if you're shooting at noon and there's no shade at all anywhere. So I'm sure some of you out there have photographed maybe a wedding or an event where they decide that the, the appropriate time to get married is noon in the middle of the field with no trees. <laughs> Um, and then you're supposed to do the portraits after, and you're like, okay, great. Um, so we're going to talk about what options you have for that. Then we have shooting at noon with shade. And just so you know, later on, we do have a segment about shooting groups with natural light. So I wanted to let you know that's coming up, but that'll be just a little bit later. So let's just watch this video. So you've talked to your subject and you've told them the worst time of day to shoot is at high noon. Instead, you wanna shoot at golden hour. You wanna shoot late in the day and they won't listen to you. <laughs> and you have no control, but you have to shoot at high noon. So this segment, what I wanna do is briefly cover the different options you have for lighting in the middle of the day at high noon. So let's start with worst case scenario is that you don't have any shade anywhere. It's a big open field in the middle of the day, what do you do? All right, well, the very first thing that you would ideally do is have a diffuser, because then what you can do is you can soften the light on their face. So we're just gonna go quick through everything we already talked about today, all the different tools, and how they apply to shooting at high noon. So first of all, let's check out this diffuser, and we already talked about this tool. This is the tool I recommend, the Westcott 7-foot shoot-through umbrella. So we're going to soften the light. I'm gonna have you pull it away real quick. I'm gonna get a before and after. And go ahead, great. And bring it as close as possible, but lean it towards me a little bit so it's not in the back of my frame. Great, oh, beautiful. Okay, so huge difference in the quality of light there. If you've got a diffuser, awesome. Turn your head this way just a little bit. I wanna do one more. Turning her head towards that sunlight. Perfect. Great, and if the light wasn't ideal in her face, you can go ahead, grab a reflector, and you can even have her hold it. You hold it right there for just a little bit of fill, a little bit more catch lights. Great, perfect, look right here, beautiful. So let's assume it's the middle of the day, high noon, you don't have your diffuser, or if you do, maybe it's small and you have five or six or seven different people you have to photograph. Maybe it's that wedding out in the middle of the field with no shade. So what do you do if you can't use your diffuser? So at minimum, what you wanna do is what we just did, and it's to turn your subjects back to the sun. So at least they're not squinting. At least they don't have that really harsh light on their face. Now, in many instances, you'll actually have some kind of natural reflectors that'll fill in light from the face, and you wanna look for that. You wanna make sure you look for the large white wall, or you look for the white moving van, or perhaps it's a wedding. Maybe you look for the white side of a church that is reflecting that light back. In this instance, we have a little bit of fill on her face, which it's not ideal light, but it's actually reflected off of this greenish brownish grass here, filling in, so it's not completely dark on her face. But unfortunately, the problem that you run into is that dynamic range, um, how far apart the exposures are. The light on her hair is very bright. The light on her face is very, very dark. If you take a shot, you're not going to be able to capture it all unless you use your reflector. We've talked about this in length, so let's see it in practice in the middle of the day. And we're going to take silver first. And when we hold that silver up, I'm gonna have you look just this way. I'm gonna grab a couple shots and catch a little bit more light. Okay, so she has it nice and feathered, so it's not too harsh on her face. Give me just a little bit more. And a little more. And a little bit more. Good. Perfect. So what I'm looking for here is if we add just a little bit of light to this scene, her face is still going to be dark, but it'll be better illuminated. There won't be as much exposure difference between her face and the background, but unfortunately her hair will still be overexposed. Now, if you have a diffuser, you can bring that diffuser in, diffuse her hair from behind, and then add a reflector from the front. But let's say that what you're really trying to do is make sure that hair isn't wildly overexposed. What you would actually have to do is have a lot of reflection. Instead of feathering like you usually do, you would add a lot of light using a silver reflector. It's gonna pump a lot of light in her face and even out, maybe not completely, but even out the exposure between her face and the light on her hair. So I'm gonna show you how that works. The downside, of course, is that a silver 
reflector is not always flattering. It's very, it creates very spectral, uh, it creates a lot of bright highlights on her face. And it's a little bit harsh, not ideal. Let's, let's bring that in. So let's see, here's without, let me do without real quick. Without, great, and now give me a lot. As much as you can. Just definitely, oh, silver, sorry. And on silver, so give me a ton. Okay, so if you look, notice, she is squinting because it's bright. But if you look, now that light on her hair is not as overexposed. So when we meet her for her face, it's going to underexpose a little bit. I mean, it's going to basically close down to compensate for that bright light, which means that the light on her hair will also appear darker. So by evening out those exposures, adding more light to her face, it helps us get a better shot even at high noon when we just have the light to the back of her hair. Later in the day, of course, this would be much more pleasing, but at high noon, this is what we have to work with. Now, the downside to this, of course, is that silver reflector is very, very harsh. It has very bright highlights. It's not ideal for the skin. So what you can do instead is use that silver reflector, but we're going to have to come in much closer, and it's not going to be really ideal or possible to get a full length with this small white reflector. So white, please, nice and close. Here's without, and then move in real close. And here's with and turn your head towards the light just a little, good. So you'll notice the white is definitely a lot less powerful, but it is much more flattering to the face. And at high noon, if I wanna go ahead and get a full length shot, I'm gonna to have to go in and just like we talked about before, grab that large reflector so we can get more head to toe coverage. And if we need her out of the frame, our assistant out of the frame, we're going to need the silver so that we can have a little bit of distance. So we're gonna take a look at that real quick. And those are what you do. These are the steps of what you take if you just have no shade in sight whatsoever. Okay, good, and just give me a little bit of fill. Good, perfect. Great, right there. And now I can get three quarter length or full length shots. Something else that you want to try to do when shooting at high noon as well is check behind your subject. If I'm shooting this way, it's very, very bright. And so I'm gonna have overexposed highlights because it's the middle of the day. But instead, if I can change my angle a bit to maybe get the dark shaded trees behind her, it's going to improve the overall look of the scene. So I'm just going to move over this way just a bit. Same fill. Perfect. Great. And chin down just a little. Great. All right, so just to take a look at some of the different types of images we could make during that scene. You know, here we've got the seven foot shoot through umbrella, gives you that nice diffused light, but you know, I thought that her eyes didn't have quite the pop it needed. So this is putting a reflector underneath, a little bit of white just to improve the catch lights. But if I want a little bit more separation, a little bit more pop, more of a contrasty photo, I can come over here, put her back to the sun, and I liked the white reflector better for her skin. It was just a little bit softer, wrapped around a little bit. So this is going to be high noon when you do not have shade. For the person who asked about the, the uh, blocking off overhead, that's what this is. This is a black piece of foam core overhead. I like how this is her head. A uh, black piece of foam core overhead, and then a white piece of foam core to the side to give her that direction of light. What foam core is $299, $399? Um, and it's nice because I keep them in the car. And you could definitely do this with a black side of reflector um, over top and then like the pizza box thing. So this is what I was talking about for foam core in case someone internationally doesn't know what foam core is. It's basically like thick poster board. This one, it's white on one side and black on the other. So I'll take two pieces of this. Um, I don't want to break this, but I might. Can I break this? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> in my car, I would often keep a piece of white foam core that was bent in half, and this also creates very nice light. If you're going to photograph a woman and you want really glowing light, um, you could use over the uh, overhang, having covered shade, and then kind of pop this underneath for a little bit of light, or even just open shade. Um, even in the middle of the day, something like that, I could create my shade, grab my piece of foam core underneath, and it just gathers lights and gives me a little bit of more pop. I do this in the studio a lot when I want to have the light kind of wrap around the cheeks and be really, really flat and glowing. 
This is not the ideal situation for shooting at high noon. What's better is if you can find shade. And so let's assume now that we have shade. So what I would ideally do is just put her in the shade. So I'm going to back you up and have you stand in the shade of that tree. Now, if you can check this, if you notice this, this is what we talked about before. It's open shade, not covered shade. So above her head, there is no overhang. There's no trees. There's no covering. And so it's not going to be exactly ideal light on her face. Definitely going to have a little bit of highlights on the nose and forehead, a little shadows in the eyes, but it is improved from being in direct sunlight. And of course, now I have a lot less to worry about with those blown out highlights on her hair. I've compressed the scene by putting her in the shade. So let's take a look at what that looks like with no reflectors. Come in. Great. And look straight at me. Actually, the light is not bad because of this big reflective surface. The biggest problem is that it is green. Well, what do you do? Uh, even if I take a custom white balance, it's not going to be correct because you've got the blue light of the sky above and also the green below. It's going to be mixed. So instead, all you have to work with is adding a reflector. So can I bring the reflector up here? And I'm going to reflect a little bit light in from the edge of the shade. So just kick a little bit of light in there for me. Perfect. Great, so let me get down low again. And now we've gotten rid of a lot of that green and we've really compressed the scene. Taken her out of the sun, put her in the shade, added a little bit of light to improve the color, the quality, and then also the direction of light. In this particular scene that I've analyzed here, this is what I have access to. I can put her in the shade, I can use a diffuser or a reflector, but depending on the environment you're in, a couple of the things that you would ideally look for when shooting at high noon would be covered shade. So that might be a porch or a doorway or something that blocks off over top of the subject's head. It's going to even out the light and make it much more flattering. Something else that you would look for is a large natural reflector, like a large white wall or a large neutral surface bouncing the light from the sun. Another tip that I picked up along the way, if you don't have a reflector, you don't have a diffuser, you don't even have shade, is that you can actually make your own if you have to. And this is assuming you like, have nothing with you. If you have a white piece of foam core or how about a white surface, like anything that is white and neutral, and perhaps something that is black, a black solid surface, you can actually block off over the subject's head and then fill in from below with a little bit of a reflector. So I call this sandwiching the light. This is something you can do if you have no other options. So I'm going to bring you forward and just try it real quick. So assuming I have no other tools, I'm going to block off overhead, try to block out some of that light and add a reflector underneath. Or I could add a reflector a little bit from the side to give more ideal light on the face and look up at the camera for us. Perfect. So this is one of those do it yourself if you don't have anything else, a white surface and a black surface, you can make your shade and fill it in. And tilt the roof that block down, good. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to fill this. I'm going to try this from here. Just a little bit of fill. Let's try it from right there. Great. Oh, beautiful catch lights in the eyes. That's great. Beautiful. So I could definitely shoot this at high noon, create my own shade and fill in for glowing light. I actually think this is one of my favorite shots from the bunch, and it's with using, what, $4 white piece of foam core and a black piece of foam core. All right, guys, so let me just see before I move on. The rest of the day is going to be doing groups and overcast light and a little bit more about analyzing the scene. Do we have any lingering questions hanging around before we move on? There's a question right there. Excellent. This may be a little broad, but it seems like, uh, I mean, with all the different things, with the umbrellas and the, the uh, reflectors and diffusers, what is, what is uh, if you're just going to go out on location and you're looking for light and that, what, what do you take with you? I mean, versus like, I can see it's like bringing like your truck and your trailer with all this stuff. You know? <laughs> no, I think that is an awesome question. And most of the time, I take a 32-inch silver white reflector and nothing else if I want to be like traveling light. That's like the essential. If I know I'm shooting at high noon or in a place where I can't get shade, then I stick in that umbrella to make it easier on myself. But those are like the must-haves. And it builds. If I know I'm photographing a group of people, 
then I'm going to need a bigger reflector, a bigger light source. But a 32, 30 to 40 inch reflector, as long as I have silver and white, I can get away with that, and I often do. So it's actually not bad at all. Good question. All right, if we don't have any more, I think one good one, Tall Ackle says, how do you photograph a group of people under a covered shade of vegetation? I know we're gonna be covering groups here, mm -hmm. but I think the interesting thing to talk about is shade from vegetation. Uh, for example, people under an arbor or ramada with vines, the speckled light is never flattering on faces. <sighs> Okay, so that's a great question. And having that unevil, un, oh, evil, see? It's evil light, okay? Um, it's also called dappled light when it's uneven. That is a huge pain. Like, there is really not an easy way around that, especially when it's a group of people. Um, photographing a couple people, you just move them until it's not there. Um, I photographed under an arbor before where I had a background in my car and we put it up over the arbor to block out the light overhead. I've done that. There's not, there's totally not an easy solution. Um, the best you can try to do is get the dappled light on their hair, at least so it's on their head, and then pump in enough natural light using a large silver reflector to try to even out the exposure so that, that those bright highlights aren't obnoxious. But yeah, if you can avoid dappled light, do. And uh, actually, Iris, uh, one of my assistants, when we were shooting that last segment, so there was dappled light coming through the trees, and she said, you know, when that happens to me, I have it on the face all the time. And you know, I kind of, by instinct, I'm watching for it, and I move her around. So I'm just trying to, if there's dappled light, I'm just trying to get on her hair. And it actually looks nice, because it's separation from the background. So 